All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on crypto every day. My name's Austin, and in today's video, we are talking about Libra coin. We're talking about how the Fed chairman compared Bitcoin to gold, and we're talking about how the president of the United States of America just acknowledged Bitcoin, first president ever, probably, acknowledged Bitcoin as a competitor to the US dollar. I like it. A lot of things to discuss today, so hit the like button, and let's find out where we stand with the price of Bitcoin today. Yesterday, we had another red candlestick day in the market, with the price of Bitcoin dropping over $1,000 before leveling off right now at 11300 This is par for the course if you look at the last week, the last 10 days. Some people were freaking out, and don't get me wrong, it's not nothing. It's about, what, over a 10% drop in the price of Bitcoin? But when the price of Bitcoin is up over 300% in, what, two and a half months, 10% is nothing we can't handle. Now, despite this, more and more people are calling for a pullback because I want to put a few metrics on your radar. These are metrics that we've talked about before. I just want to give you an update today. I want to give you an update on the Bitcoin price based off of Willy Woo's on-chain metrics. And this is sort of the beauty of Bitcoin because usually in the past, with stocks, all you have is the exchange volume and exchange metrics. But with Bitcoin, we can look on chain, which is what Willy Woo specializes in, which just sort of gives more of an actual realized price to see are people actually transacting on the blockchain? Meaning, is this price manipulated bloat, maybe based off a tether pump or something of that nature, or is it real? Let's check it out. And we're gonna be looking at a few metrics, most notably the NVT ratio and signal. So this is a metric which compares the network value of Bitcoin or the market cap compared with the actual transactions on the blockchain. And of course the volume is run over a 90 day moving average. We'll get to this in a second, but first let's just zoom in. Let's get real close on this price action over the last two and a half months. This blue line represents the price of Bitcoin which I, what I just showed you on TradingView. These three, these three metrics right here, they are the NVT 200. This one is the NVT 90 and NVT 60. Now, if you want the man himself, Willy Wu, to give you an update on this himself, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. The man gave about a 40 minute interview. I thought it was really valuable. Talked about a bunch of different stuff, not just this. So if you have 40 minutes, go check that out. Link in the description. But just to offer some clarity, Obviously, this red line, the NVT 200, comes with a lot more history, taking a lot more data into account, so it's heavier. This one should move a little slower, but the NVT 90 and the NVT 60, these two are shorter averages. So make no mistake about it, this is bullish movement from the NVT averages as the price of Bitcoin has been moving up. These averages have been moving up as well. But if we take all that into account, the realized price of Bitcoin is only 5,200. So we are a little overextended at the moment. And you know what? These prices or these metrics, they don't have to match. And if we jump back into NVT signal, we can see right here, this is the realized price from 2015, 16, 17, and 18. And you can see that the market cap of Bitcoin right here, this is that run up into 2017, because especially over these last four or five years, We've seen more exchanges pop up, meaning more transactions are being put on the exchange. We've had side chains pop up, so they're never truly going to be exactly the same. But nonetheless, this just it's an interesting metric to keep your eye on, especially this NVT signal. And again, this is the network value of Bitcoin, meaning Bitcoin's market cap divided by the on-chain volume over a 90-day moving average for Bitcoin. And what you'll notice is that usually every time Bitcoin's NVT signal breaks above 70, especially for any extended amount of time, usually we've seen a price pullback. In 2013, NVT signal broke above 70, price pullback. Broke above 70, price pullback. The last two times the NVT signal broke above 70, well, obviously we remember 2017, and then this correction down from 6K to 3K, this NVT signal again broke above 70, which is where we are right now. So like I said, just be a little cautious. Obviously, this doesn't have to happen tomorrow. But from this chart, and again, you want to use many different metrics. Mm, let me go back here. 
from this chart, it's gonna happen. Sometime. I mean, correction should happen. According to Willy Woo, and again, I'm gonna leave the full interview in the description down below, check it out, the metric that he's giving, price expectations based on those metrics we were talking about, he expects a correction down to 8,000. And again, use many metrics to decide this. Today, I just wanna bring you some of these on-chain analytics, which we have, thanks to Willy Woo, thanks to this brave new world of blockchain that we're all a part of. Based on the on-chain metrics, Willy Woo says, and I quote, I expect a retrace. We have to get back down around the $8,000 mark. Now, any lower, he says, would be unlikely just based on the demand that he's seeing for this coin, Bitcoin, right now. If you have a different opinion, leave a comment down below in the comment section. Check out his website. Check out that interview. I'm leaving all of these signaling charts, everything down below. Check it out. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Three pieces of news to go over. Guys, stick around for this. This was a big news day. First piece of news, the SEC clears Blockstack to hold their first regulated token offering. This news was so big, it was broke by the Wall Street Journal themselves. So what does this mean? Well, the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC on Wednesday cleared blockchain startup Blockstack to sell Bitcoin-like digital tokens, a first of its kind offering what could give young cryptocurrency businesses a new fundraising template. So this is very bullish news for the longevity of cryptocurrency. This is precedent setting right here. Because as we know, ICOs, initial coin offerings, obviously have been on the decline the last few years. Ever since the SEC started cracking down, well, this is the SEC saying that yes, you're allowed to fundraise with cryptocurrency. You can offer investors a token as opposed to shares. Now, in my opinion, do I think that this is going to now open up the floodgates for initial coin offerings from companies? Uh, not yet. Because trust me, these guys had to go through plenty years, I think, of compliance checking and making sure they were fully legal and compliant. So it's not going to be easy. But this is a step in the right direction. Very bullish. I like it. Next piece of news. And if you follow us on Twitter or if you just follow crypto Twitter at all, then I know you've seen this. Donald Trump tweeted yesterday, I am not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trades, other illegal activity, yada, yada, yada. He went on to talk about Facebook, uh, Facebook's Libra coin as well. Got incredible press from crypto Twitter, mainly because I believe this is the first time a sitting president has acknowledged Bitcoin. And yes, Donald Trump panned Bitcoin, said he didn't like it, but I like it. Donald Trump, he has one of the largest followings on Twitter, and now he really just opened up the debate on sovereign-backed currency, like the US dollar, and unsovereign, unregulated, decentralized, permissionless currency, pros and cons of each. Really just opening up the discussion to the world of Bitcoin versus not Bitcoin. What's the difference? And yeah, you know this already, but you know what else is based on thin air? The US dollar. It's not backed by anything. You know what else is used to trade drugs? The US dollar. Next piece of news, also opening up the discussion for Bitcoin. This just happened yesterday. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell compares Bitcoin to gold. If you want to look at the full interview, this was in front of his little congressional committee. And Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that he can envision a return to an era where multiple currencies are used in the United States. So again, this discussion is something we would have never seen in this sort of magnitude two years ago. And really, this is because of Facebook coin. During Powell's testimony before the Senate Banking Committee, so this was a committee on Facebook's planned Libra cryptocurrency, he said, the size of Facebook's network means it could, it could be essentially, immediately, systematically important. So very interesting how scared the regulators are of Facebook coin. And I get it. I want to read you this insight in just one second. But how he compared gold to Bitcoin, check this out. Though the initiative raised a lot of concerns about the privacy and money, money laundering aspects of Facebook coin, he began to speak favorably about other cryptocurrencies. This is the quote. 
Almost no one uses Bitcoin for payments. They use it more as an alternative to gold, he said on Thursday afternoon. It's a speculative store of value. Wow. I mean, we're seeing this on the congressional level. We're seeing this from the executive level right at the very top. In the Wall Street Journal, we're seeing it. Guys, uh, exciting. I don't know what else to say. Exciting times. Let me know what you think. But the last thing, and I just want to leave you on this, an ominous warning about, about the implications that Facebook's LibraCoin could really have. This just happened at London's Real Talk. Whenever we get these sort of insights, I always like to bring it to you. From Andre Antonopoulos talking about Facebook coin. More than anything else, this is a surveillance coin. It is the worst kind of surveillance coin connected to the worst kind of surveillance company that's exercising the worst kind of surveillance capitalism. You want to play in that? I never would. I don't have Facebook applications. I don't have an account. It's not on my phone. I would never touch the stuff. You want to go there? Great. But remember, every time you make an easy transaction and you hear that little ding ding sound, remember, that's the sound of democracy dying. That's the sound of the independence dying. That's the sound of personal privacy dying. And you just made somebody rich while killing all of the things that matter in free societies. Andreas Antonopoulos regarding the new Facebook cryptocurrency. That's the video for today. Guys, my name's Austin. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. And like always, I'll see you tomorrow.